Today we'll be talking about a book called The Way to Rainy Mountain. Now this is a piece of Native American literature, um, and as such, I'm just going to say right off the bat, I don't feel it will be appropriate to give it any sort of rating. I'm not going to give it, you know, a 1 to 10. I'm not going to say I thought this was a 9 out of 10 book. I don't really think that's appropriate, because what the book is is a collection of traditional tales uh, from a specific tribe uh, that have been passed down and then essentially uh, put into this book, along with a few other things. But a rating doesn't really seem appropriate. You can't rate a story that's traditional, it's been passed down. I can't look at their creation story and say, that's not good writing. It, it just doesn't work that way. So no rating will be given. And I'm not going to say whether it's good or bad, per se, but I will certainly tell you my opinion on the book and how I think others will feel about the book. And maybe some of the criticism I've heard from other people of the book. Although, once again, I don't really feel there is any sort of criticism you can give to the book. Um, to start off, The Way of Rainy Mountain is about the Kiowa tribe. The Kiowa occupy, or occupied, still do occupy, what is currently known as Oklahoma in the United States. Um, they are a plains tribe from the plains. And uh, Rainy Mountain, which is part of the title of the book, The Way to Rainy Mountain, is a holy site to the, to the Kiowa. It's, uh, it's not really a mountain, I've seen it before, I've been there. It's more of like a little kind of hill. Uh, you can Google it if you want to see what it looks like. It's, it's a very pretty place, I really enjoyed it. I, I would certainly recommend going there if you live anywhere near Oklahoma, or you have any interests in uh, Native American culture at all. It was very interesting, I enjoyed it very much. Um, but back to the book. If you're looking to purchase this book, by the way, the author is um, N. Scott Mamaday, who is also a, a wonderful wonderful speaker, by the way, if you ever uh, happen to hear of him coming around and giving speeches anywhere near where you live, or you can just look him up on YouTube. He's a, he's a beautiful speaker, uh, and he's essentially the one who compiled all these stories and then adds a few extra elements. And that's one of the things that's very interesting about this book, is it, um, I'll show you an example, has, what it does is it has two page setups, so there'll be one, one page over here, one page over here, um, on the left page, from my perspective, left page, has a story, a traditional Kiowa story. And then on the right, there are two more things. On the right, first, is a historical edition, and then a personal edition by N. Scott, N. Scott Mamaday. I'll show you what that looks like here. So you can see over here, you have the traditional, uh, traditional story in its entirety. This, this is a Kiowa story. I believe this is one of the ones about the creation of the world and the Kiowa people. Then over here in this section, there's a historical element relating to this. Uh, and then down here is a personal note that has some relation to the story by the author, Mamaday. And that carries on throughout all the stories. They're all like that, with the traditional story over here carrying on to the historical, and then finally uh, the personal note. It's a very interesting form of writing. I, I really enjoyed it. It was nice to just not see... Uh, I think I might have been a little more confused, and I still am a bit confused by the book. I'm not very good with native literature, but I would have been much more confused if it was just straight up uh, native stories all through it. But the, the insertion of the little historical portion and the personal por portion was very interesting, and I found it a very nice addition to go along with the native stories. It brought, it brought additional flavor to them, if that makes sense. I, I felt like it added a lot to it. Uh, the book also has several illustrations by um, Al Mamaday. I believe that's Mamaday's father or brother. I can't recall. I should know that, but just several several uh, pictures throughout the book that are they're actually, I really enjoy the art style. They're nothing ridiculously uh, complicated, but they certainly are rather appealing to the eye, in my opinion. They look very, they're very interesting. I like them very much. Um, but essentially the story just goes, the book just goes through tradition after traditional story uh, and some of them are sort of connected, like at the beginning, there are all these creation stories, and then there's, like, uh, different uh, figures to follow, like there's Spider, and then Spider goes on some adventures and does some things, and then it just continues through some of the stories, and then later on, some of them aren't related at all to each other, some of them are just stories. And it goes on for quite some ways, um, but it's not a very long book, so I, I would definitely recommend uh, picking it up if you have any interest in native literature. It's only about... Uh, 80 pages or so. It's pretty short, and a lot of those pages, the font is pretty big as you've seen here, really big writing. Uh, some pages have big pictures on them, 
so it really isn't even 80 pages. It's even less than that. Uh, if you want to read it, I thought it was a pretty good read. It took me less than a day to finish, so it was definitely worth the time, in my opinion. And it gives a very nice insight to the Kiowa tribe. I learned a lot about them, in a, but not in an educated sense. Like, I could go and read a textbook on the Kiowa, and I would learn about them. But this book was much different than that, because it really gave me direct insight to almost what it was like to be a Kiowa. And of course there are things I don't understand, because I'm not from the Kiowa tribe. But the book was very insightful, and it, I, I, I felt like I was part of it for some parts, if that makes sense. Um, if you don't understand how native literature works, not that all native literature is the same, but I, what I'm trying to say is a lot of the stories are very simplistic, uh, and I'm kind of spoiled by, I suppose, a European-style writing, so when I first started reading through this, I was kind of expecting a very well-formed stories, you know, with story arcs and all those other terrible things, but it's not, um, they're very simple stories, and it's not a bad thing at all, because all that they really do is serve to get their point across, but some of them were very interesting, and some of, what I find fascinating is, since they're all so small, about a page each of writing, but they, they cover such a large idea in just that one page, if that makes sense. So what, what the author has to do, or the, whoever originally wrote these stories, uh, passed them down, would have to do is put so many details into so little of a space, and it, it's fascinating to see how they did that. But ju just a warning, if you've never read native literature before, is that it can be a little confusing. You might not understand what's going on, and there will be a few things that you'll kind of just be like, why Why did that happen? What's the point of this? And what I found is it's usually best to not just question it. You just accept what's happening. Like if if the sky gives birth to people, uh, which isn't, this isn't, that's not a Kiowa belief, by the way, but say the sky gives birth to people, you don't say, well, why did the sky give birth to people? No, you just, that is how it is. The sky gave birth to people, and that's what it's like. Um, I'd like to read a short excerpt, too, if, you don't mind. I don't think it matters because you're across that computer, so you can't tell me otherwise. But uh, I'm going to read my personal favorite story from this book, and hopefully I won't butcher it. Uh, so here we go. This is one of the Kiowa stories. If an arrow is well made, it will have tooth marks upon it. That is how you know. The Kiowas made fine arrows and straightened them in their teeth. Then they drew them to the bow to see if they were straight. Once there was a man and his wife, they were alone at night in their teepee. By the light of the fire, the man was making arrows. After a while, he caught sight of something. There was a small opening in the teepee where two hides were sewn together. Someone was there on the outside, looking in. The man went on with his work, but he said to his wife, Someone is standing outside. Do not be afraid. Let us talk easily, as of ordinary things. He took up an arrow and straightened it in his teeth. Then, as it was right for him to do, he drew it to the bow and took aim, first in the direction and then in that. And all the while he was talking as if to his wife, but this is how he spoke. I know that you are there on the outside, for I can feel your eyes upon me. If you are a Kiowa, you will understand what I am saying, and you will speak your name. But there was no answer. And the man went on in the same way, pointing the arrow all around. At last his aim fell upon the place where his enemy stood, and he let go of the string. The arrow went straight to the enemy's heart. So there's just a little story from it. And then it includes, uh, includes a little historical part on the side. Uh, it says, The old men were the best arrow makers, for they could bring time and patience to their craft. The young men, and fighter, the, young men the fighters and hunters, were willing to pay a high price for arrows that were well made. So it just talks briefly about the history of arrow making, you know. And then as a personal part by Mama Day that I, I'm not going to bore you with. Not that it's boring, but the video has gone on long enough. So, just want to say, I really enjoyed this book. If you're interested in native writing at all, I think this would be a great book. Um, once again, not going to give it a rating system, not going to say it's good or bad, but I will certainly tell you that I personally enjoyed the book very much, and I hope if you read it that you will too. Thank you.